say this is a national security risk. It's not like, like, listen, playtime is over, okay? Well, I, I should probably not pose it, Rush. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Nevertheless, the consequences of a nuclear war cannot be underestimated. A nuclear war is deadly, catastrophic, and uncalled for. Unfortunately, as things stand, Russia. Even in this war, the SpaceX founder has strongly warned Russian dictator Vladimir Putin for starting the war in Eastern Europe. At one point, Elon challenged Putin to a physical combat. In an interview, Elon Musk reveals some of the measures that European countries can use to tame Putin's influence and cut Russia's money supply. Check this out. The terrible actions of Putin are to a certain degree also a result uh, of uh, strate strategic mistakes that Europe, particularly Germany, has made the dropout of nuclear energy. Actually, can I just say, I think it's very important that Germany not shut down its nuclear power stations. I think this is extremely crazy. Uh, uh, I just wanted to ask a question on that, because if we, if we really want to reduce Putin's power and Europeans and Germany's dependence on Russian energy, this works only through decarbonization. So my question yes. to you is, should we have even more nuclear energy in order to get faster independent from Putin and to yes. resolve the yes. climate issues. I, I, I want to be super clear. In my opinion, Germany should not only not shut down the nuclear power plants, it should reopen the ones that shut down. And those are the, those are the fastest ones to restart. Uh, um, it's crazy to shut down nuclear power plants. Uh, now, especially like if you're in, in a place where there's not natural disasters, you know, so like if you're Maybe somewhere where there's severe earthquakes or tsunamis or something like that, it's more, uh, uh, you know, of a question mark as to, I mean, maybe, you know, but if, if there's not like 
massive natural disaster risk, which Germany does not have, then there's really no danger with the nuclear power plants. And you don't see any uh, safer alternatives that could have a similar effect, so solar and wind is not going to do it. Do you have any other ideas in mind about future en energy policy? I, I, I think long term, most of uh, civilization's energy is going to come from uh, solar, uh, and then you, you need uh, to store it with a battery, uh, because obviously the sun only shines uh, during the day, um, and sometimes it's very cloudy, so you need uh, solar batteries is, 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 will be the main long-term uh, way that civilization is powered. But between now and then, we, we need uh, to maintain nuclear. I can't emphasize enough, uh, please do not shut down the nuclear power plants uh, and please re reopen the ones that um, have been shut. This is total madness to shut them down. I want to be clear, total Let's madness. Let's see um, whether your very clear words are heard I mean, in your own to to consequences strong, in strongest. Germany. I'm trying to use the strongest words. Yeah. I would say this is a national security risk. It's not like, like, listen, playtime is over, okay? Uh, obviously, <laughs> playtime is over. When it is a national security issue, you can be sure that Elon Musk will speak out. From the onset of the war in February this year, Elon has been a staunch supporter of Ukraine. He has helped Ukraine's army and the civilians to stay connected by supplying the war-torn country with SpaceX Starlink satellite internet. In an interview, Musk discusses the dangers of an AI war and his efforts of helping Ukraine with satellite internet connection. Have a look. You've been supplying uh, for Ukraine, you've been helping the internet there, right? Um, yes. It's been successful? Yes. Were you hesitant at all from any negative backlash from Russia? Well, I... I should probably not visit Russia. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think any, you, you tweeted any, something about that. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Yo, what? I mean, it's probably unwise. You know? I mean, yeah. in 2017, you said uh, the Third World War will be a war with or about AI. Now we have a very conventional war. Can AI help? One of the reasons for uh, World War Three would be. Um, if one country has, or one place has advanced AI technology and the other powers want it, uh, or they're worried about some country ga gaining uh, advanced AI that would, would um, give them a strong advantage in war, then they may be tempted to uh, attack before the country that is developing the strong AI has that uh, for use in, in weapons technology. Could an AI, even in this moment, just with the technology that we have, before us be used in some fairly destructive ways? You can make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money by just taking the, the, the face ID chip that's used in cell phones and uh, having a small explosive charge and a, and a standard drone and have them just do a grid sweep of the building until they find the person they're looking for, ram into them and, ex and explode. You can do that right now. No extra, no new technology is needed right now. People just think, this stuff is of, of sci-fi novels and movies, and it's so far away, but yeah. every time I hear you speak, it's like, well, no, this stuff is sitting, it's, it's right here. Probably a bigger risk than, than being hunted down by a, a drone is that uh, AI would be used to make incredibly effective propaganda uh, that would not seem like pro propaganda. So these are deep things. Yeah, influence the direction of society, influence elections, artificial intelligence, just hones the message, hones the message, check, looks, at the feed, looks at the feedback, makes this message slightly better. Within milliseconds, it, could, it can um, adapt this message and, and shift and react to news. You make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money by just taking the, the, the face ID chip that's used in cell phones and uh, having a small explosive charge and a, and a standard drone and have them just do a grid sweep of the building until they find the person they're looking for, ram into them and, ex and explode. You can do that right now. No extra, no new technology is needed right now. Probably a bigger risk than, than being hunted down by a, a drone is that uh, AI would be used to make incredibly effective propaganda uh, that would not seem like propaganda. So these are deep things. Yeah, influence the direction of society, influence elections, artificial intelligence. Just hones the message, hones the message, check, looks, at the feed, looks at the feedback, makes this message slightly better. Within milliseconds, it, could, it can 
um, adapt this message and, and shift and react to news. And, and there's so many uh, social media accounts out there that are n not people. Like, how do, you, how do you know it's a person, not a person? One reason that regulators and others are a little bit in denial about this is the speed, the pace of change. What is the consequence of that speed of change? The way in which a regulation is put in place is slow and linear. Right. And we are facing an exponential threat. And if you, uh, if you have a linear response to an exp exponential threat, it's quite likely the exponential threat will win. That, in a nutshell, is the issue. The long-term aspiration for Neuralink was, would be to achieve a symbiosis with uh, artificial intelligence um, and to achieve a sort of democratization of, of intelligence uh, such that it is not monopolistically held in a purely digital form by governments and, and large corporations. Basically, an effort for man to merge with machine in yes. a healthy way. Yes. To beat machines, you basically have to merge with machines. Most likely, yes. Essentially, how do we ensure that the future constitutes the, the sum of the will of humanity? Um, and so if we have billions of people with the high bandwidth link to the AI extension of themselves, it would actually make everyone hyper smart. I mean, and by the way, you, you kind of have this already in, in a weird way in that you have uh, a digital tertiary layer in the form of your phone, your, your computers. You basically have this, these computing devices that form a, a tertiary layer on your cognition already. Talking about, okay, what would it take to uh, really solve for uh, spinal cord injuries? We already know how to do this. Uh, implant electrodes into the motor cortex of the brain um, and then bypass the, the severed section of the, of the spine and have uh, effectively local microcontrollers near the muscle groups. It could restore full limb functionality. Very exciting what can be done here. And then just memory. Like, as people get older, they lose their memory. And so this thing, it's like, it's incredibly sad when a mother forgets her own children. Uh, and that can be solved too. Well, I think the, the first bit of advice would be to really pay, pay close attention to the development of artificial intelligence. Um, I think this is, we need to just be very careful in uh, how we adopt artificial intelligence and to make sure that uh, researchers don't get carried away. Because uh, sometimes what happens is a scientist can get so engrossed in their work, they don't necessarily realize the ramifications of what they're doing. Um, so I think it's important for public safety that we, you know, governments keep a close eye on artificial intelligence and make sure that it does not represent a danger to the public. I'm not really all that worried about the short-term stuff, the things that are, um, not, like narrow AI is not a species level risk. Um, it, 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 will, it will result in dislocation, uh, in lost jobs and, um, it, you know, the, the sort of better weaponry and that kind of thing. But it is not a fundamental species level risk, uh, whereas uh, digital superintelligence is. Uh, so it's really all about laying the groundwork to make sure that if, if humanity collectively decides that creating digital superintelligence is the right move, then we should do so very, very carefully. Um, very, very carefully. This is the most important thing that we could possibly do. I, I don't think most people understand just how quickly machine intelligence is advancing. It's much faster than almost anyone realizes, even within Silicon Valley, and certainly outside Silicon Valley, people really have no idea. Um, so... Why is that dangerous? If, if, there's, if there's a super intelligent, particularly if it's engaged in recursive self-improvement, if there's some digital super, super intelligence, um, and its optimization or utility function um, is something that's detrimental to humanity, then it will have a very bad effect. Uh, you know, it could be just something like getting rid of spam email or something, and it's like, concludes, well, the best way to get rid of spam is to get rid of humans. You think of like the, the digital tools that you have, your phone, your computer, the applications that you have, like the fact that, as I was mentioning earlier, you can ask a question and instantly get an answer uh, from Google or you know, from other things. And uh, 
And so you already have a digital tertiary, tertiary layer. I say tertiary because you can think of the limbic system, kind of the, the animal brain or the primal brain, and then the cort cortex, kind of the thinking, planning part of the brain, and then your digital self as a, as a third layer. Um, the, so you already have that, and, and it's like if somebody dies, their digital ghost is still around. You know, all of their emails and their, the pictures that they posted and the social media, that still lives, even if they physically, if, if, if they died. So over time, I think we will probably see a, um, a closer merger of biological intelligence and digital intelligence.